Good morning, this is Craig here from Craig's Car Care again. We're going to get a little bit of out of our normal automotive routine side of things and talk about my boat motor. It is a 2006 F-150 TXR, it's a Yamaha. It has 150 horsepower like the 150 indicates. It's fuel injected. Really, really good, good, uh, good setup. So, I was going through all the maintenance on it and always learning that the boat motors are quite a bit different than the automotive side as most everybody knows that they've played with both. So on the boat it was time to do the timing belt both by age and hours. So getting to the belt and getting things off and I'll go shoot a separate video on that and tie it to this one. It's a quick, easy one hour job. What I wasn't clear on was how to release the tensioner assembly that sits on top of the motor, and I'll show you that here in a minute as well. So, what I wasn't able to find either in, in the Yamaha manual or on the internet, um, even try talking to a couple of boat guys, and they said they just replace them because uh, they're not able to get them released. So, I just stopped there and went to doing my own research. What I found now this was online, was the Yamaha uh, bulletin that was put out about all these tensioners that were getting broke. I have not broke mine. When I, when I felt the resistance and things weren't doing what I expected them to do for a timing belt, I went and did some research before breaking. That's about almost $400 for this assembly. So I thought if it can be reused safely, I want to safely reuse it. So I found the bulletin. And uh, I'll grab the bulletin number and stick it on there so you can research it and print it out yourself. Uh, but basically what it talks about is the tensioner here, the inside of this is valved so that it's, it, it's valved so that fluid cannot rapidly be put back into its reservoir. And what this does is it keeps under heavy loads, it keeps the timing belt and changing loads from bouncing on its tensioner and possibly disrupting cam and crank timing. This is a double overhead cam or possibly even jumping the belt. So I went and took this thing apart. I was just frustrated and I want to I like to know how things work by by nature. And I get there's a spring loaded tensioner inside here, which is just pre take it apart, pay attention, I'll try and give some pictures to how that goes. And uh, it talks about using a five millimeter holding tool to hold it. Um, I found a 3 16th bit is just shy of 5 millimeters, so that, that's going to work well. And then, of course, here's the tensioner. Now, what I did is I loaded it up in a vise very gently and uh, just just to get a better understanding how it works. And, you know, it, it's when you first take it off after you've been after you've let it sit and it's uh, the original time, it's going to be rock solid like you can't push it. After you compress it ever so slowly and let the fluid exchange back into its reservoir, it'll begin to let you compress. Now, when I took this out originally, I could go all the way down. Now it's been sitting here about a minute. It's actually coming back out and it's getting stiffer and stiffer. And eventually, it's, all the fluid will have returned back into the chamber behind the pin. And it'll be that rock solid. So when you're working on your boat and you put a Allen head in here, this one's a little bit small and you go cranking it, it's going to feel like it won't move. And there is no quick release or trick to getting this stuff out. Um, this is not the hole they're talking about for the 5 millimeter holding pin. It's actually back in this corner is where it needs to go. This hole here has a pin on the other side, so it will do you absolutely no good to stick something in there. So when you do this on your motor, why it's still bolted down with your, let's pretend this is all bolted down, when you go to release tension on this, you're just going to slowly pull back on it. And it even says here, no more than 11 foot-pounds or 15 newton meters if you're into the metric side of things. So as you slowly rotate back, um, this was short so it made it appear harder. But as you slowly keep tension on it, it will slowly roll back. As it rolls back, this pin is going to move away from this notch in this corner. When you get it far enough back, 
all the way to the fully seated position back here on the pin, you'll be able to drop this in the corner and then slowly release tension and let it get some grip on there. Once you have it here, make sure that until you're completely ready to do this, you do not just pull this out or let this fall out. Take care with this or it could damage the tensioner if it suddenly snaps. And that's the same with any hydraulic tensioners. So when your new belt's on and you're ready to go, and you got your timing right and you've rechecked your marks, then you're going to slowly pull back on this ever so slightly until the tension is released on your 5 millimeter or 3 16 holding tool. Grenade pin is what some people have called it because originally when you buy them new, they have a ring in there that you can pull like a grenade. You'll pull this out and then just slowly release this and wait for this to go down, for this to go out in tension. See, now it's even getting stiffer and stiffer as it's been sitting here. So I'm going to put this thing back together and shoot a little bit more video and try and share it all with you <clears throat> in hopes it saves somebody like you uh, hours of research like I've had to spend on this. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're back. Now, let me see if I can make this work here for you to understand. This is with the attentioner reassembled. Now, again, you don't have to go through all this. Just understand what the principles are. You're on top. You've loosened. This is looser. I'm not even positive you have to loosen this, but I loosen this off a little bit via the hold down. I'll know more when I'm done. Um, this is the little window we're talking about where you're going to insert your your 5 millimeter or 3 16 which is 4.89 millimeters, into the hole. When you're doing this initially, this is it feels like it won't move and you can't figure out how the heck am I going to, you know, how the heck does this uh, back off? So after we went through and cycled this and exercised it a few times very slowly, um, we've got where the tension comes off. If I let it sit for a while, it'll get rock hard again. So if you can see that piston going back in, that's what you're trying to compress. Well, now that it's been exercised, it's very easy to move. Once it sits out and the fluid refills the cylinder, it's just going to get stiffer and stiffer. And it'll, that's that resistance you keep feeling and why people are breaking this section here. You can see mine's actually starting to show some wear, and, um, which is why I stopped. So you'll need to get a suitable Allen head that'll fit in here and apply very light, steady pressure until it rolls back. And it, when it wills, this window will open up. If you can see that. I hope that's working when you can see that here. You see that open up in there? That's what you're trying to achieve, but it's going to take a few minutes. Uh, it took me about two minutes to, to get it to finally slow, go back and slowly release the pressure on there. And once it's like that, you put your 5 millimeter. I had it working a second ago, I promise. I had it in there a second ago. I think the tension's come back out enough that I can't set it back in. I'll have to reset. And then you'll put your your uh, five millimeter piece up in here. And then once you're there, you're going to slowly let off. Make sure it's holding tension. The inside cup here has that spring in there that's also help you. But uh, treat it gently. Get your belt installed. Recheck all your timing marks several times especially if you have a 150 like mine, they are interference fit motors and will uh, destroy themselves if this is not done correctly. Once you got that all done, take a little bit of tension off your, off your holding tool, remove your holding tool, and slowly release this and recheck all your marks. Hope that helps. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Okay, we're back here. This is uh, on the tensioner and how to release it that we just went over and uh, so we've gotten the uh, the new belt on we marked it with the we marked the old belt and then copied our marks over I always do a little T for top and then I mark each cam with its own unique spot plus we're going to be lined up here in the center also and here there's a little arrow here these all may vary 
year by year and engine size by engine size, but on the uh, 05, 06, maybe 07 F-150s, you got a little triangle here on the crankshaft and it lines up with your line here. But since this was running and this is just done for maintenance, we also pre-marked everything. So we are putting it back exactly where it went when it came off and it was running very well. Plus, we have gone through and verified our marks and we'll verify them again when we're done. Um, this video really is on how to do the timing belt, more about just how to release the tensioner. And I've shot about four different videos and a bunch of still pictures, so it's going to be kind of piecemealed together. Um, the, uh, when you do these, the stator has to come off. Uh, there's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it. Um, you can secure it off of a bar or something above if you need to. Uh, just be gentle with it. Uh, they say don't use an impact as you may damage the uh, magnets when you're taking the, uh, the big nut off the center, off the crankshaft here. So we uh, did everything by hand. And uh, the flywheel was kind of tough to pull off, even with, a, with an appropriate puller. Um, but it came off. We had to put a lot, you know, good amount of tension on it and then tap on the center of the uh, tool with a hammer and it let the flywheel jump up and get that dude released. It's been on here, what is it, 17? So it's been on there, what, 11 years or so? Maybe longer if the motor sat around. So that's pretty much it. So now that we've, uh, we're here, we've got our, oops, our little holding pin just fell over a little bit. So we're fairly tight there, just a little loose. We've checked all of our marks. We have tension on our back side, so we're not, this is our running side, which we want this to be tight. This has got a little bit of slack in it still. So I'm gonna try and do this uh, one-handed. So I'm gonna do is lift off a little bit and uh, don't let that happen. That fell all the way through, thank goodness. So it's sitting right there, that could have been bad. So don't be me, use two hands, one to hold your pin one to uh, release tension. So here I'm releasing tension. And see, once it's off, once you release it the first time, it's pretty loose. We see now it's getting stiffer. And um, when I had to cut to that video, or at the end of the uh, video, <clears throat> I, couldn't get, uh, I couldn't get my tool in here, my 3 16th. So I ended up having to go back over to the uh, vise and spend another two minutes, almost three minutes, slowly compressing that piston I was telling you about because I had taken this off to understand how it, how it works. And um, recompressed it, started all over, and got my pin holder in there. So when you do this on your boat, don't take this off. Um, get you the appropriate Allen head. I'm sorry, I don't have the right the uh, size wrote down here. And this one's actually become a little loose now. Um, it was tighter when I started. But all those attempts earlier made this loose, so don't be me. Get you a little bit of a cheater pipe or something if you need to, just not for strength, just so you can be gentle with it, and prop your hands somewhere. You're only talking about 11 foot-pounds, um, so just pull gently back on it. There's me trying to use my hand with a pipe, imaginary pipe. Ease back on it, and you'll slowly feel this coming around. As it comes around, this window in here is going to open up there you'll see that pin and there's a piston that pushes against it and there's a spring on the inside so when you feel all that and you can drop your pin in there then you're set um, you saw my mine fell over at the last second probably put something else in there maybe a little pocket screwdriver to help keep that drill bit or whatever you're going to use your tensioning tool or holding tool to keep it straight up and down until you're ready to pop it back on um, now that I understand this, this is easily a one-hour job. Um, next time, which I, you know, we're we're not boat techs here. Um, I've got my uh, my all my certifications in automotive for probably what 30 years, but you know these are different animals. So that's it. I hope this helps you and saves you some time. Thanks for watching.